Hey, hey everyone, welcome to this video. I'm really excited about this because we're gonna talk about so many fun things today. Number one, eye mask was this weekend. I'll chat to you about my eye mask experience. Number two, exactly what I picked up at eye mask right here in my little bag. Number three, a few personal updates um, involving some traveling that I'm going to be doing. So a lot of fun things. And I hope you guys are comfortable. You're ready for a bit of a chit chatty video. This was definitely not planned. A little bit of an impromptu decision to sit down and just film. As you can see, I'm faceless for this video, which I don't mind. I think it's, it's rather casual and refreshing to be honest. So we're just going to talk about lots of fun um, beauty things today. And I was, of course, at IMAS this past weekend, the International Makeup Artist Trade Show, where I met a viewer um, of my channel. And I'm so sorry that I was a bit out of it when I met you because I really wasn't expecting to be kind of recognized. And I'm still at this stage where I don't know how to respond to people when they tell me that um, they watch my videos or things like that or they recognize me. Because in a way, it feels like they know a lot more about me than I know about them. And I feel a little bit out of place and I wasn't cognitively processing exactly what was going on. So it was really nice to meet you and I'm sorry, I was a little bit out of it and flustered. I just really wasn't expecting anyone to kind of see me or know who I was, but it was really nice to see you and um, thanks for coming over to say hi. So products, shall we say, I have everything put on the chair next to me because then it's easier to find and I'll just pop things back into the bag once I'm done talking about them. So I thought we would start with some brushes. I was over at Royal and Langnickel always have such a hard time saying that name. They sell a whole bunch of different brushes. I really do think, um, after going to the different booths, that the Royal and Lanical brushes are overall, as a whole, a bit more of a better quality product than crown brushes. And um, I have bought a few crown brushes before, but from the ones I own from Royal and Lanical, they are a bit superior, I feel like, just in terms of um, how they last, um, how well made the brushes are, just, you know, from my experience anyway. So I was back there, and originally I wanted to get the Complexion Brush C185. I just love that brush, but they were all sold out, so I couldn't get it back up. But I did get these two lip brushes, and I am always losing my lip brushes. I don't know about you guys, but they're small, especially the travel ones. You know, they look like a little pen or something, and they just get lost so easily. So I bought a regular lip brush. I believe this is natural hair. Oh, no, I'm wrong. It says synthetic lip brush. So it's just a small flat brush with rounded corners. And then I have here, I, I believe this is synthetic as well, the travel lip brush. So you pop open the lid, you push it under the other part, and the brush just comes out from the top. Kind of a very cute little thing. So two lip brushes from Royal and Lengdeco, and those were very inexpensive, three to four bucks per brush. Then I was at a store called Miss Jen, and I believe they're based locally out of Surrey, and they were selling red cherry lashes. So I got two of the same design. The first one, actually, they're all the 747 XS Black. And I believe S XS stands for extra short because these are one of definitely one of the shorter lashes I've seen from Red Cherry. They did have a very good selection. These were about $2.50 a pair, so about five bucks plus tax altogether. Um, quite inexpensive, I think, for eyelashes. I mean, from what you can find here, Ardell or Quo or you know brands like that, they're still quite expensive in the drugstore. We're talking maybe six to seven bucks for a pair of lashes. So at two fifty, I thought these were a great price, and these are rather cute. They're like short little cute lashes. Um, I did touch them once I got home. They did not feel quite as soft, I will have to say, compared to the Quo lashes or even the Ardell ones. I'm not sure if these are human hair. They could be synthetic. Someone let me know if you guys are a Red Cherry Lash fan. Now next, I stopped by this place called Studio Effects. Now they are located, I believe, near the Granville Skytrain station at Cathedral Place. And I've never been there, but I will go there at some point because they... I finally found out Carrie, the Ben Nye products, along with other um, theater and film brands such as Graftobin, 
maybe they carry mud as well I'm not quite certain but definitely a lot of pro products that you cannot find anywhere else and as far as I know you don't have to have a license or be a makeup or film student or to go you just waltz in there and you can see all the products and get whatever that you want because I was really bummed that they did not have the single products from Ben Nye. They did bring the big beautiful palettes and they were such a good price. I believe $34 for a palette of six Ben Nye blushers. Crazy. But I would never be able to use up all of them nor would I, you know, make use of all the different colors they had in the palette. So I just picked up one thing. But if you guys live in Canada and you want to get a hold of Ben Nye products easily as well as other makeup brands um, that are, you know, not sold in Sephora like the theater brands or the film brands, try Studio FX. Or if you live locally, just hop on over there to the um, Cathedral Place. And uh, just letting you guys know because I was looking for these all over. And when I was actually at the booth for Studio FX, I caught this, the very, very infamous banana powder from Ben Nye. I have here the small size, which was eight bucks. There was the larger version, I think maybe twice as much for 12 bucks. Fabulous price for um, a product that's highly raved about. Now, I've never used this, so this is my first time. And if you guys are a big fan of the Ben Nye Banana Powder, let me know how you like to use it or what is the proper way to use it if you're a makeup artist or um, you know you are very familiar with Ben Nye products. All right, moving on. I was also over at Friends Beauty Supply talking to someone there and um, I saw these guys, which are really, really cool and I've always wanted one and I know that sounds ridiculous because I don't do makeup for a living but I just wanted one and um, here it is this is just a mixing palette it's stainless steel rounded corners really simple actually but the thing is I don't like mixing foundations and products on the back of my hand it feels gross it feels icky and if I am in a rush to do my makeup I have to go back to the bathroom to wash this off just too much hassle so I really like the idea of having a mixing palette and um, you can sanitize these easily and along with that I also got this which is a little spatula to use for mixing the products. I know this is probably so unnecessary, but I feel cool using this and that's all I'm gonna say. So I got these two from Friends Beauty Supply. They're based out of Los Angeles, California. So if you guys live in that area or you just live in US because you know, they ship, right? They do ship internationally, but especially if you live in US and you want to get a hold of um, these theater brands or film brands, Graf Tobin, um, ben Nye, I believe, you know, those like blood and scarring and special effects products. You can just order them online from um, Friends Beauty Supply. And they've been doing this for a long, long time, supplying to the film and theater industry over in California, but also all over the world. So that was very interesting to learn about that. And then the next thing I want to show you guys is going to be a little bit controversial. And I know. Um, and all I'm going to say is that, you know, everything aside, I think we can just talk about these based on the aesthetic quality and how they look and how they wear. These are the Velour Lashes and they're 100% mink. Um, they have a pamphlet talking about how that works. If you're, more interest, if you're interested in more details, you can also go online to see their process and learn more about um, how the mink lashes come about but i'm just gonna leave it there and um, let's just talk about the lashes shall we these are actually apparently a favorite of wendy from wendy's lookbook because i was talking to the girls and they're actually based out of toronto canada which i didn't know about before um wendy is a big lover of their lashes and this is actually her favorite style and she orders them in bulk as i was told and this style is called complete me I will tell you, these are the most expensive lashes I have ever, 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 ever bought in my entire beauty life, ever. Um, these were $20 at IMAX. Originally, without the IMAX discount, it's probably $34 Canadian. Super expensive. Looking at them now, I didn't quite notice, but looking at them now, they do have the hard backbone which I'm thinking makes them less comfortable to wear, to be honest, but they are more durable with the hard backbone, if you can see that, that black strip over there. And the lashes, I will say they are soft to the touch, but they're not quite as soft as the Dolly Wink lashes that I love. The Otona Series Sweet Cat, um, I've talked to you guys about and I have reviewed. Those are absolutely fabulous. Of course, they are still expensive because you're ordering them from overseas, but you can find them at 16 bucks for a pair of two 
a set of two pairs. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't know. I'll have to wear them to tell you more about these. But looking at them now, I'm not sure if they're absolutely worth the $34 at regular retail price. I mean, I know they're mink lashes. I know that's really fancy and all. But um, I'm not sure. I'm a bit of a lash connoisseur and um, I love my lashes. But I really need to know that... I'm paying for something extra super special so I'll get back to you guys on this if you want to review actually if you want to review on any of these things just pop me a comment and let me know down below and I will add that to my list but velour lashes they did have a pretty big booth and quite a large selection of their products all right moving on last few things I was over at the makeup forever booth and um, talking about this if you guys are wondering if I have video footage from IMAX this year I don't um, mainly because I was looking at the exhibitors list and a lot of the brands are repeats number one some of the brands that are really good from last year pulled out this year so all we had were just a lot of brush brands and then a few beauty brands and then a few shops that carry you know different lines and the shops brought a few of their things so the actual brands themselves didn't all show there for example OCC was not there NYX also pulled out that was you know very kind of sad and unfortunate um, but also the bigger reason is that I went with a friend the poor girl was on crutches because she busted her knee just pretty much right after buying the tickets for IMAX. So we had already planned to go together and she toughed it out. She was like, brave girl on her crutches. We're going through IMAX. So I want to be able to help her as much as possible, you know, and having a camcorder with a camera and everything just wasn't going to work out. So we thought we'd just go and just kind of enjoy ourselves at the show. So that was a little bit of backstory. If you're wondering about footage from IMAX, I don't have any but um, I will give you stories in just a second so Makeup Forever we were there for ages in line um, usually they are very hard to find at discount which is probably why the booth was so so busy and I bought three things from there the first one is an eyeshadow single number 165 which is a matte shade actually and when I got home I realized these are in the single pan so if you guys have suggestions on what type of palettes fit the Makeup Forever eyeshadows which is not the Z palette I'm not crazy about the Z palette I don't find them aesthetically pleasing they're kind of dull looking um, if you have suggestions for pans for these please please let me know because I was silly and I did not realize this when I picked up the eyeshadow this was about 12 bucks which I think was a good deal for Makeup Forever and um, a very pretty shade a matte shade actually which I don't own very many of for the fall and autumnal weather so here it is, 165. Um, they did have, you know, the HD foundations, a lot of other things, the blushers, brushes, makeup cases, um, all kinds of things at the Makeup Forever booth. But I didn't exactly have everything I wanted, and I'll get to that in a bit. This is this one is the Makeup Forever Aqua Brow, such an iconic product and so so highly talked about. You guys know I love my dual brow pencil, but for something a little bit darker, I thought I would try the Aqua Brow and for, you know, weather where it's very muggy or I'm sweating a lot or I'm out, I really do like to have my eyebrows. As you can see, I'm eyebrowless today and I feel like I'm a little bit expressionless because I can't, you know, do that. But uh, this is the Aqua Brow in shade number 25 called Ash. There are five or six different shades, ranging from a blonde down to a near almost smoky black. And I didn't want to go too dark um, because I'm quite fair and I don't like having very heavy brows. So I went with 25 and I'll have to use it to tell you more about it and how it works. But it's supposed to be incredible and very, very potent. And great for those who just have very few brow hairs to begin with. Now this... Oh, had me in a rut. I really want to try one of the Rouge Artist Intense lipsticks from Makeup Forever but uh, they were out of the shade that I really really wanted or maybe they just didn't bring it to the show which is number 26. So instead I, off I opted for number 29 which is a deeper richer shade in a slightly different tone. This is a bit mauve compared to what I was going for originally but still beautiful color still very easily wearable by a lot of people I think this looks more like a Burberry type of shade to be honest or maybe a Dior shade for the fall and winter time so this is number 29 the Rouge Artiste Intense Lipstick from Makeup Forever they did have a good selection of colors just um, the other ones didn't quite catch my eye and I'm kind of in this kind of sophisticated you know brownie nude or rosy shade type of lipstick kick right now so I went for this one 
Now, last thing, I did stop by the MAC counter after going to a makeup after going to the makeup artist trade show and picked up the face and body foundation because here's the update for you. Um, I'm going to be in Toronto next month in August attending a wedding. Not exactly in the immediate Toronto city. So the wedding is held um, a bit further away out of the city but I'm going to be spending a few days there and obviously I'm going to go to the wedding. So I wanted a foundation that photographed flawlessly, really beautiful textures and it's going to look good, you know, because I'm going to have a special role. I think I'm the maid of honor or something like that. I'm not good with these things but I have a special role and I know there's going to be photographs and I want to look good for her, right? So this is the makeup the MAC Face and Body Foundation. I did previously use the Makeup Forever Face and Body Foundation, which is what I was getting at. But, um, you know, I love the texture, I love the look, I love everything except for the color. The Face and Body Foundation for Makeup Forever does not come in very many shades, unfortunately. Number 20 was the closest match, but it was still a bit dark, especially because I'm, I will be wearing a strapless dress. My neck and shoulders and chest would be showing. And my face is a little bit darker than the rest of my body, but um, wearing the Makeup Forever would match my face more or less but it will be a bit too dark for my neck and a whole bunch of issues so unfortunately I had to give that one up I really do love it I just wish they came out in more shades so MAC where I was um, chose this shade for me called C2 now I could wear C1 or C2 C2 probably matched my face a little bit better given the current condition C1 matched my neck and chest my natural body color very well in theory, I'd probably be a mix between the two, but I decided to just go with C2 for a tiny bit more color um, if I need to bring it down to my ne neck right here. I'm ton tied now. I've been talking too long. Alright, this, the Face and Body Foundation. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. If you are a photographer, if you are a um, makeup artist, if you do film, if you do, if you're a model, if you're just on camera a lot, it's beautiful. And I'm going to talk about that maybe more in a review if you guys would like, but um, too many things to say about this. This is one of my favorite foundations of all time. If you ever wondered, I know I don't talk about this very much because the bottle is so big and I don't always want to have such a big bottle of foundation. But since I'm going to be going to a wedding, I want to look really, really good. So I feel like this is 20 minutes already. Okay, what else do I have to say? Um, Toronto, if you guys have suggestions on where to go, what to do, this is going to be my very first time over in Toronto. I may or may not stop by Montreal. I'm not sure what the exact plans are. Give me suggestions. Throw things at me um, on where to go, what to eat. I'm a huge culture and history junkie. I'll definitely be bringing my camera. Um, I will may or may not do a little bit of beauty shopping, but that's not the main point of this trip. I just want to really get involved into the feel and just the overall atmosphere of Toronto and the Toronto area. So leave me comments. Let me know. Last thing. Update. My very first smartphone! I'm so excited about this and I'm, I'm such a geek because um, I don't think anyone else is you know going to really care but I'm so thrilled about this. This is my very first smartphone. You may remember me talking about getting a new a first smartphone a couple of months ago and I finally you know got down to it. Um, Best Buy had a great $100 off the Samsung S3 so I got this. It took me a long time to decide what I wanted, Android or iOS or or which phone or it's just it's crazy and it's really actually hard looking for a good plan and looking for a good smartphone especially if this is your first one so I ended up here and I just got this a few days ago so if you guys have suggestions for best Android apps um, that I should check out I don't even know how to use all the buttons yet I mean I just realized you could talk to your phone which is really cool I've been talking to my phone by myself um, kind of weird and weird not my family but I like it. I think it's really fun and um, I haven't got a case for it yet. I will be doing that. I find a lot of cases for the S3 are really really boring to be honest. Um, not as fun as the iPhone that's for sure but I'm determined to find something really cool and really cute for my phone and um, I'll eventually figure out how to use the the apps and everything but leave me suggestions what's your favorite um photo app definitely other than instagram i don't think i'm going to be getting into in instagram it's just one too many social media things to keep on top of but i do want um you know a cool photo app maybe like a planner or organizer type of thing or um i don't know fun things you guys throw stuff at me in terms of android apps i'm very excited about this so that's enough of me 
you guys take a break if you do you want to see more details on um, all the products I mentioned, exactly where you can buy them if you if you want to look for them online. I'll try to find as many links as possible and put it into the corresponding blog post to this video, which will be linked down in the information bar. I'm done. I'm done today. I will talk to you guys later. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.